prokinetics for SIBO. Have you heard of these? You definitely need to learn about them if you have not and you've had SIBO and it keeps coming back. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we're on talking about an important topic in the SIBO series, prokinetics. And I'm going to dive into what they are, what are the good kinds, you know, how you use them. But first, I just want to introduce myself to anybody who's new. I'm a physician, a family physician, a functional medicine physician. physician. Yes, I can say it. And a registered dietitian. I have my own functional medicine practice. I work a lot with dysbiosis and SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, if you want more information about what it actually is, see some of my prior videos on that or get my free PDF, which is 10 tips for beating SIBO. And I will have a, a course, like a guide coming up soon. Um, so why are we talking about prokinetics? What is a prokinetic? Well, let's circle back here. I'm going to be talking about the importance of the migraine motor complex, complex a little bit more in a future video. But basically, the migraine motor complex is a... Um, cyclical like cleansing wave that your digestion does to help push things along, to move things from the small intestine into the large intestine and then out through the bowel movements. So you you could tell how important that would be and um, we want that migrating motor complex to be working um, very well for our um, to prevent future recurrence of SIBO or SIBO itself and just ever coming small intestinal bacteria overgrowth but even to help our microbiome as well which I've talked about a ton on this channel um, so we need this we need this to be working and prokinetics can help it work but before we dive into those which I am going to cover so stay tuned all the way to the end um, I want to talk about some non-medical, non-supplement ways we can improve our migrating motor complex and help prevent SIBO and help prevent stagnation, basically things sitting in the intestine. So what can we do? We can fast. Um, I've talked about the benefits of fasting in other videos, um, at least 12 hours overnight, maybe even 14. Some people are doing more than that. Um, so we can fast and get um, good progress for helping the migrating motor complex at least 12 hours. We also want to have spacing in between our meals. You know, we've heard this in various ways in our lives before about how important it is to space meals, but definitely for your migrating motor complex to keep things moving, you need to do that. So because the migrating motor complex, sorry, I'm talking too fast, um, starts to work when you are not digesting. So if you're digesting all the time, you can't have those cleansing waves. You can't have that that time where it does its its job in the background there. So we do need to have four to five hours between meals and a good overnight fast. So be sure when we talk about the next subject, which are the prokinetics, that you're discussing any of this with your healthcare provider, because I am not your healthcare provider. I can't be your healthcare provider over, um, you know, social media videos, those kind of things, because I don't know you. So I don't know what's best for you, but I'm just telling you from a kind of more mass numbers perspective, what I've seen work when I work with patients and what some of the people I've trained with have seen work. So um, prokinetics, so there's some natural options and there's some pharmaceutical options. So the pharmaceutical options are stronger. They tend to be the ones we go to if somebody really, really struggles with recurrent SIBO, it keeps coming back and we just, you know, didn't have luck the first couple of times with the, the natural prokinetics. I do prefer to start with the natural if we can, um, just because they are not, um, either don't have the expense of the one that's, I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, or they are not antibiotic, which is one of the ones we're talking about, or um, they don't have to come from a compounding pharmacy. You can get them on our full script dispensary. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them from a lot of times your local, you know, natural food store. So what are those? Um, one is a German blend of some different herbs called Iberogast. And I like to use this for symptom control too. I like to use it for you know, diarrhea and constipation and, and bloating. I find it very effective. Now, that is not an American supplement company or one that's more prominent over here from doctors, so it's not on my full script dispensary where you get the discount, but it is on Amazon and on some other, um, I don't know why on some others, but it is on some other sites too. So that's a liquid, um, and you can take, say for kids, um, you know, talk to your, their doctors about it though. And if you're pregnant, talk to your doctor about it, but it was used in pregnancy for quite a long time. 
So you want to do 30, if you're using it as a prokinetic, here's the kicker. If you're using it as a prokinetic, use it at night when that migrating motor complex is kicking in to help it. So not just using it with every meal like it says on the label, but if you're using it after you've been treated for SIBO, this is what I forgot to say. So when you do a prokinetic, you do it right after you finish your SIBO treatment. So I've already covered methane dominant SIBO because that's the most common one that I see. So refer to that video a couple of videos ago. And you know, after your two week antibiotic protocol or after your four week herbal antibiotic protocol, you go directly then to a prokinetic. So Iberogast could be that prokinetic. So that would be 30 drops, which is basically a dropper full at night. Um, you can still use it for those other diarrhea, constipation, all that, but you would just add it during the day to make sure you have that nighttime dose. And then um, ginger is another, ginger extract is another good one. Um, you can usually want to take a thousand milligrams at night um, also. Now ginger can cause that ginger burn, which feels like it's heartburn. It's not really heartburn. Um, as far as damaging your lining of your stomach or anything like that, but it does feel burny. Um, and if you have heartburn, it could irritate that. So you may want to stay or clear of ginger, in which case you could choose the Iberogas. Now there's also some great motility blends. I like Modal Pro. Um, I will put a link to that um, below. There's also one called S-MMC that I will put a link to, and that MMC is referring to the migrating motor complex. And those will be links in the description where you can get them off my um, discount dispensary or, um, you know, you can get them off Amazon also if that's where you prefer to order things. So those are options and they sometimes contain, the blends sometimes contain 5-HTP, which for some people can help them sleep. Um, for some people it interrupts their sleep. So you do want to know how you handle 5-HTP and look for that as an ingredient because it can help the migrating motor complex. But Look for it as an ingredient if you don't tolerate it, and then it can be um, contraindicated sometimes if you're on a serotonin um, blocking, or not a serotonin blocking, but a serotonin enhancing um, medication like an antidepressant. So always, you know, go over that with your doctor or provider. So what are the prescription options? So I mentioned there's an antibiotic, low dose, so it doesn't have all of the damaging microbiome effects that it would at its higher dose, but it's still an antibiotic. So that would be um, low dose erythromycin. And usually you get that compounded when it's in that low of a dose, or you can break up, um, I don't use that that much, but I think you can break up a standard dose of it too. Um, and for dosing, all this is going to be in the guide that I'm gonna be coming out with, but a low dose erythromycin is um, an option. And then you could also do a lower dose Prucalipride, which it's brand name. It's not, the generic is not available anyway, but that's the generic name. Brand name is Motegrity. I've had trouble with trying to get this approved for any of my patients. It's, it's extremely expensive. It's marketed for IBS with constipation. So what you'll usually see as a response from the U.S. insurance companies will be like, well, why don't you try this cheaper constipation medicine? Well, because we're not using it for constipation. So that brings up a good point. Now, are any of these prokinetics going to help your constipation or your diarrhea? They could, but they would have to be dosed a little bit differently. The procalopride or metegrity would have to be dosed at its fuller dose, not a half a pill, but a full pill or, or two pills even. Um, the Iberogast would have to be dosed during the day frequently. Ginger, maybe that could help more so like nausea, but um, dosed during the day. So but they're not specifically, we're not giving them for your constipation. We're not giving them for your diarrhea. We're giving them for your migrating motor complex only. And then the last option I use quite a bit, it's called low dose naltrexone. So it is pharmaceutical, but it's not an antibiotic. Um, it can be a little pricey from the compounding pharmacies because that's where you have to get it from. But I do find it really helps if you have an autoimmune disease also, um, including even Hashimoto's for your thyroid or um, rheumatoid, lupus, um, but I've also found just the gut in general, it helps that. Um, and so not necessarily going to help constipation, like I said, that's not what we're using it for, but um, sometimes I've seen it help for that and I used to try to use it for that, but it's not as effective directly for that. It's more working in the background, helping that migrating motor complex. So how would you dose that? Um, usually lower dose, you know, naltrexone itself via a pharmacy would be 50 milligrams and we're using that for opioid issues. What we're talking about here is low dose naltrexone, no, low dose naltrexone from a compounding pharmacy. So that's more like 
you know, anywhere from one, if somebody has thyroid disease, all the way up to like five milligrams is usually the max dose. And then adjusting along the way, trying to get it up if you need to, to that fuller five milligram dose. Um, usually we use that just at night. Sometimes it can interfere with sleep or cause some weird dreams, um, in which case um, you could use it a little bit earlier or, um, but generally if we're trying to affect the migraine motor complex, we need at least one of the doses to be at night. So that is the rundown on prokinetics and the migrating motor complex. More information to come on that. Um, but thank you for joining me. Please like and share um, and subscribe to help keep the channel going. And I'll see you next time. Ask me any comments. Um, ask me any questions in the comments too. Thanks so much.